Hello everyone, it's Amy, and I am just here to do week two of Build Your Stash and Craft. And in week two, we are going to make decorated paper clips. We have our items from week one, and we are now, we have our items from week two, which is paint brushes, paper clips, a couple of different colors of nail polish, and paper. So what we're going to do is we are going to decorate our paper clips, but first we're going to paint them with the fingernail polish and then we're going to put decorations on top. So what we're going to start with is we have a piece of our paper. I already ripped it out of our pad and we're going to paint this up so that we can use this to make flowers and stuff. We'll start with that. I also do have a spray bottle of water and this is an empty hairspray bottle if you don't have a spray bottle you don't need one you can just drip a little water on there and I have a cool whip container of water you can use paper cups you can use anything paper cups and anything that's tall and skinny um, tend to like to tip over so bowls do work better for your water when you are done painting don't dump your water down the sink throw it out in the yard or what I do is I put it I have a container with kitty litter in it I don't normally have quite this much water I usually have a, a little bit of a smaller um, like a cottage cheese container and I only put a little water in the bottom um, but I just dump it in the kitty litter when it gets hard I throw it in the garbage if you constantly are dumping gluey water and painty water down your sink you will clog up your sink so you don't want to dump it down your sink so and it's probably not good to throw it outside but that's how I always started was by just throwing it out in the yard um, so what we're going to start with is we're going to paint our paper and then while we're painting our paper clips our paper will be drying um, I have a cottage cheese lid if you don't have any kind of an old lid um, you can just use a piece of your paper and just squirt your colors out on your paper plastic lids work nice then you let it dry and you can just peel it off and throw it away don't wash it while it's wet don't put it down your sink so let's start with we have our poster paint that we bought for week one and also as a setup I also this is just a box that um, somebody had at Christmas time and so I kept it to put some of our stuff in I took a couple of paper clips and what I did was because we're going to need a place to hang our paper clips while they're drying I just opened it up like this and then just open it up like that so I just fold unfolded it and then made this little part come down and then I just pushed it into the corrugated part of the box and it takes a little finagling but any box if you've got a box that's open like this box right here the corrugated cardboard is open you can just slip it right down in there that works really great but this box is so short our paper clip would touch the table and since we're doing this so our paper clip will dry we don't want it to touch the table there we go just push that into the box and then just kind of bend it out a little bit so when we're done with our paper clips we're just going to take them and we're going to put them on there to hang so that they can dry all right so let's take some colors and just put a little bit with our paintbrush these poster paints are very thick um I do want this side because the other side has like a dent in there and I don't want that dent. Um, the nice thing about the thick paints are they go a little bit further. You can get a really, really dark color using it just straight, but um, you can add water to it and that will... Um, I'm not going to use the red yet. Because we heat with wood, I better cover it back up or it's going to dry up. There we go. I'm going to put just a little bit of water with this blue. And all we're going to do is just get some color on the paper. In just any random order because we're going to rip this up and cut it up and roll it up. and So it, it doesn't matter where it is. I, do, I will say that I bought these at the dollar store. They are hard... Um, nylon brushes not the best brush to to paint with um, they do make some nice marks so if you can kind of see like it does really it gives it some texture there which that's kind of nice 
but I think that the next time that we get a chance, we'll be picking up some kind of a soft brush at the Dollar Tree so that it's easier to, certain things are easier to do with a soft brush. These brushes are, are not the best, but they work. That's the whole point. The whole point of this whole project is to show you what you can do for a reasonable amount of money that will work and let you do what you want to do without breaking the bank. When I first started, I always used different, um, anything I could get my hands on. It didn't, I, you know, I didn't go, and I still actually, I do not go to the fine art section at the craft stores or at Walmart. Well, I don't know that Walmart has one, but they do have a, more expensive things, I think. Um, I, I just don't go to those sections because I'm not doing anything that I need to last a million years. And I have shaken all of these paints before we started. Let me get just a little bit of this paint and put it out here. I should have wiped that brush off before I stuck it in the paint because I got a little bit of blue water in there. I'm going to pull that out. Yeah. So, you know, if you are going to sell your paintings for a lot of money, Zeke, um, the dogs, I think, have found a ball under the table or under the desk and they're trying to get it. Um, put a little water with that. But yeah, if, you, if you're not doing a painting that you're going to sell for a lot of money and you know, you're know you doing this for the fun of it, you don't need all of that archival. If you're scrapbooking, you want archival. Um, I don't scrapbook. But uh, an archival just means it's going to last longer and it's not going to, in scrapbooking and that type of thing, if you're using actual photographs, uh, the acid-free and archival is supposed to not um, ruin your pictures. So, but we're just going to get different colors of paint on here. And then we're going to let this dry. I am going to stop right here. I'm going to put some more colors on the rest. I'm going to paint this whole page just randomly like this and it's okay to have some white in there too um and i'm going to get the ball for the dog so that they stop digging at the floor and you won't have to sit here and watch me put all of this paint on the paper and i will be right back Okay, I'm back, and I decided just to do half of the page because what we're making is going to be very small, so this will give us a lot. And I'm going to use the other half of my page um, to make some patterns so that we can make some little butterflies and we can make some hearts. And for me, it's easier to, to do them in halves um, so that both sides are symmetrical. So uh, we're going to let our paper dry. And while our paper is drying, we're going to paint our paper clips. And all you're going to do is the end, you've got the part that slides into the paper, and your paper slides on like this. That's the part you do not want to hang on to. You want to hang on to the end that's going to be the top. Now, we don't need to paint here because that's where we're going to put our flowers and our butterflies. I'm going to separate this just a little bit just a little bit so that the two pieces are not touching. And I'm not sure, I don't think I shook this, so I'm gonna shake up our nail polish. And like I said, you can use these covered ones. You can also use just the silver ones. I prefer the silver ones, but the Dollar Tree did not have them. And then all we're gonna do is we are going to paint them. And if the color comes out the way that you like it, one coat's good. If not, if you want it darker, just go ahead and put on a second coat, just like with your nails. So we're just gonna paint the whole thing. And then once we get it painted, we're gonna hang it over on the paper clips that we 
put on our box. And all the noise in the background is just the dogs playing this morning. Usually this is nap time for them. But they've decided since I'm doing a video that they should play. Okay. It's really hard to try and flip that over, so you just kind of have to do it however it works for you. And if it gets a little bit, like, bumpy here or there, um, that's totally okay. It just gives it texture, makes it look interesting. In mixed media art, in all sorts of art, texture is a good thing. So... That's one fun thing about it. You don't have to really worry about having a brush stroke here or there. There we go. I'm gonna take the big blob off of there. And if you paint your nails, not something that I have done in years, but if you paint your nails, you'll know that, you know, like when you get the first coat on, you have to let it dry so that you don't make a mess, so it doesn't get really bad. Try and get that bottom one. Okay, there, now we've got the whole thing covered. And what I'm going to do is we've got our box with our paper clips, and I'm just going to put it right there where I'm hanging on to it, let it go, and now it's just hanging there, and we're just going to let them hang there until they dry. If we feel that we need a second coat, we'll put a second coat on and let those dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a couple more of these, and I will be back. Okay, I have painted three um, of the paper clips and now we're going to make something to decorate the top so the first thing is I'm going to make a couple of patterns and what I'm going to do because I like both sides to be the same I'm going to draw half of a butterfly and then I'll fold it and then cut so that both sides are symmetrical. Now, I'm making this very small. Let me try and get something so I could do it a little closer. Um, see, it's only like the size of my thumb. I'm doing it small because it's gonna go on the top of our paper clip, so we really can't have it be too large. So I'm doing like, I kinda of did the body here, and now I'm gonna do the top wing. I'm just kinda of go up and you know, there's there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, that's the wonderful thing about crafting is you just do whatever makes you happy. And I think I'm going to put a little tail on it down there. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold right at the center of that body so that I can cut it out. go now we're just now it is kind of small and fiddly but that's because what we're doing is small so I'm just gonna go around the body a little bit and then I'm going to use this to trace on my colored paper to give me a colored butterfly but first I need a pattern And if I don't stay exactly on the lines, that's no big deal. It's my butterfly, so I can change it any way I want to. Sometimes it's easier to just cut your excess paper off when you're trying to do something small and fiddly. And if you had a heavier piece of paper, a piece of junk mail or something that was kind of heavy, once you get your design, sometimes it's easier to fold the thin paper. Once you get your design, you could trace it onto a heavier piece of cardstock or a piece of cereal box or something and cut that out for your tracing. 
but I'm just going to use this. So this is what our butterfly looked like. Turned out pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Okay, and then I'm going to make a heart, which I don't need to actually draw that. I'm just going to cut on my fold here so I have a little piece of paper. I'm cutting a small piece of paper to kind of limit myself as to how big I make this heart. I'll figure out how to start it. Um, because I have to remember it's going on the top of that paper clip. And so I don't want it to be overpowering and I want it to fit. Let's see how this one looks. And if it doesn't look good, I'll just make another one. That looks good. And I'm going to use that to trace on them. Now the reason that I'm cutting these out and then tracing them onto the back of our colored paper is because um, I don't want to fold the colored paper and have a fold in my on the top of my paper clip. So now we're going to make a few circles because we'll need a circle for the back. And I'm going to show you the way that I make a circle. Cut a square. Okay, and then you start in the center of this square, and as you're cutting, don't look where you're cutting really necessarily, watch for your fingers, but, um, and you're going to go to the center of this part of the next side. Then you're going to look at the center of the next side as you cut to it. It helps you get there easier. So we're going to the center there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is not going to be a perfect, perfect circle to the center there. And especially since my square was not a perfect square, to the center there. And then right over to the center where I started. There we go. Now, it's not a perfect circle, but it's close. Um, closer than what I ever, and if you want to trim it up a little bit, you can just do that. It's going to be on the back of your paper clip, so nobody's going to really see it. But, And you want that to be about as big. This is where you're going to glue your butterfly. So you want that to be a little bit bigger than your paper clip. So then you're going to take your butterfly and put it on there, and you're going to glue those together. And the same with your heart. Now, the other thing is, is that... You don't want them to show. So I think my heart needs to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to cut another heart that's just a little bit bigger because I want the heart to cover that circle. On the butterfly, if I need to um, maybe cut a little bit of that circle away, I will do that. Okay, so there's my heart, and my circle will fit behind there just fine, because we're going to glue those together. That's what's going to hold our, our hearts on the paper. Okay, so all we're going to do now is we'll go to the back of our paper. I want to find a spot that's kind of red. I'm going to go right here, and I'm just going to trace around this heart. with a pen or a pencil and that is one thing that I think everybody has if you don't you can get them free this one came from an eye shop you can get them from your bank so that's one thing that we're not going to put into our budget okay so there we've got our heart I'm going to cut the least amount around it as I can because I don't want to lose too much of my paper. And then we're just going to cut around it. There we go. So there's our heart to put on our paper clip. And I'm going to do the butterfly. 
going to do him kind of down here where the yellow is because I think that looks pretty. And then what we can do with our black permanent marker is we'll go around our edges. This is going to be a little hard for me to do because I don't have my glasses on. The heart wasn't too bad, but I really can't see this very well. But by doing it this way, I'm not going to wind up with that fold in the middle of my butterfly. Whoops. Moved him a little bit. Just put him back. There we go. And then we're going to cut out our butterfly. And because we drew it on the back, um, we don't have to worry about if the lines show. Because they're going to be on the back. So that's not a big deal. If we had drawn it on the front, we would have to be so careful to make sure we cut off all those lines. And I don't like to be that careful. It's supposed to just be fun. That's the whole point of crafting in the first place. So I'll cut that off. And there we go. And then turn it over. That one had a big like point point on it and I wanted it to be more rounded. And there we go. So, and then if you, you know, he's a little bit off. So I think I kind of, well, <laughs> it's a butterfly and he keeps flying away. I think I kind of want to make this side a little more like the other side. So I'm just going to trim that out like that. There we go. And I think that looks good. Okay, now for our butterfly and for our heart, we can take our marker. And this will just give it more definition. Let's see if I can do this closer here. Okay, and all we're going to do is we're going to draw on the paper behind the butterfly right next to our butterfly. And that's going to put a slight black edge around the butterfly. Um, we have a thin paper here, which is going to soak up the black very quickly. So you want to kind of move a little bit quickly. so that we don't wind up with a great big huge black line on our butterfly. We don't want it to soak in too far. And the thinner your paper, the faster the ink will soak into it. I missed it there a little bit. And you can keep moving it so that you can see what you're doing. And there we go. Now our butterfly has a nice black background. I'm also going to give him a quick body. And again, because it's a permanent marker, I want to move fast so that it doesn't spread out too much. So there's that. And we chose this larger heart, which we haven't cut out yet. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing with our heart. We're going to I did cut out a heart. What did I? Oh, I didn't. Yes, I did. What did I do with it? Look, see, here's the waist. 
<laughs> my goodness okay I'm gonna find the heart and I'm gonna cut it out and then I will be back and I will show you how we put them together and how to make some flowers to go on it too okay I am back I have my butterfly outlined and I have my heart outlined and I have my circle backs made for them now I'm going to quick just make some flowers and I just cut a couple strips off of our painted paper and I'm just going to cut some squares like that and then all I'm going to do is just kind of cut a wavy circle in there and it doesn't hit it can be in you know kind of oval shaped circle shaped it really doesn't matter you don't even have to do wavy edges if you don't want to just do it whatever you feel like doing so we're just going to do this with a few of them and then we're going to scrunch them up and layer them up and make a flower out of them now this is not like my idea for a flower I've seen this you know all over YouTube and so I don't take credit for it I'm just showing you how I do it which is what I've learned from so many different people here on YouTube so I um well, I know one that I saw was Cat Hands on Mixed Meaty Morsels. She did what she called Pretty Posies. And this is how she did the Pretty Posies. So we're just going to do this. Okay. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to take it and we're just going to literally wad it into a ball. Then open it back up. And this, whoo, I'm gonna just do another one while I'm at it. Um, this part takes a little bit. I'm gonna do three layers. So I'll wad up three of them. And then it's a little bit fiddly, but wadding it up makes such a difference. Um, in the dimension of your flowers and it really makes them look like little flowers more than just three flat circles on top of each other it looks like three flat circles on top of each other now I could have and I should have gone around these before I wadded them up with the black marker that would have made the edges stand out it's going to be a little hard to do now so I'm not going to do it but when you I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller so it can be my top layer. Um, when you try some of these, try it with this way and try it by putting a little bit of black around the edges. So then we're just going to take our white school glue that we got, just put a little dot in the middle. Ooh, that was a large dot. And Take just a touch of that off. Layer the next layer. Oh, come here. Put that glue that I took off on there. You want the glue right in the middle because you want the layers to stay separated. You don't want them to glue to each other except in the middle. Then I'm going to take our paintbrush, push against my finger, anything soft, and just kind of make that curl up a bit then you can go in and you can separate them a little bit more you can push on them with something that's a little bit skinnier in the middle let's try pushing on it with the push it on with our paper clip in the middle there we go you just kind of separate that blue layer back the blue and red one kind of give a little bit of dimension and then what you want to do is you want to let them dry so that they'll they'll kind of dry because you've got you know all those layers of glue in there between your layers you want to let them dry a little bit and they'll dry in this fashion I make sure that I separate them from each other before I set them down to dry um, and then I can also go push in the middle again 
after they're dry when they won't the edges won't stick to each other because that's the biggest thing you don't want those edges stuck to each other so we're just going to lift those up and it's fiddly but that's okay the whole point of crafting is to just sit and do something it's okay you know some people say oh you know well that's too fiddly i don't want to do that it's just relaxing to just sit and just do it not to worry about how long it's taking and not to worry, oh, is this exactly like somebody else did? You just do what you want to do. You relax. You take that time for yourself. And you do whatever seems fun to you. Some things that you like, others won't like. Some things that others like, you won't like. It doesn't matter. You just do whatever you feel like doing. So there we go. I kind of have those separated, and I'm going to let that sit and dry. And after it's dry, I'll push it again in the middle. Now what we're going to do is we have our little paper clips here. Now I'm going to, I had kind of separated them a little bit so I could paint them. So I'm going to push them back together. Okay, now this, actually I'm doing a little fast. It's not quite dry. Um, I did put some glitter. Let's get the piece of paper. I put some glitter on this one. This was a yellow one. See the, the, except where I just pushed that off of there. That wasn't like that. Um, it covers fairly well. I put some glitter nail polish on it. Those are my two colors were green and glitter. So I'm going to take this one and I think I'm going to put my butterfly on this one. So what I'm going to do is I have my circle for the butterfly and with this one I cut the top off right there because um, it was sticking out the top of my butterfly and I didn't want to see that white paper behind there. And you can always use your colored paper even to make your circles. You don't have to use plain white paper. I'm going to put glue on here like that. And I'm going to take my butterfly and I'm going to put that on there. And then I'm going to press those two together. And they're going to sandwich the paper clip in the middle. And that will give you your decorative paper clip. Now, the way that I've done this is this the smaller part is in the front. If I had glued the butterfly on this side, the large part would be in the front. And again, the yellow is showing because I stuck my finger on there and messed it up because it wasn't dry yet. So make sure you let them dry well before you put them together. And then if you wanted to, if you got some glitter nail polish or clear nail polish. Also, clear nail polish would just make it shine. We can put a little bit of the glitter nail polish on the butterfly's wings. And that will just dress him up a little bit. We can put a little bit of the glitter nail polish or colored nail polish in the center of our flower for a, flower, for a really pretty flower center. So if you didn't get glitter nail polish this time, um, there will be another time where we'll be getting nail polish, and so you could get glitter that time. I really didn't think about putting the nail polish on it until just now, so I didn't tell you to actually get a glitter one. So, but, and if you, you know, you got a colored nail polish, you could put it down the center of your butterfly to give it a little look. You can also, Paint it with your white glue. That will give it a bit of a shine. And um, we'll do our, this one is plain. I'm not going to push that quite back together because we're only attaching to the top. I'm going to wait till it actually dries better to push it back together at the top. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take my circle, just hold it there, put some glue on it. And put glue on it if you closed it. And this is just paper, so you don't need tons and tons of glue. Once the glue dries, it will hold the paper very well. And there we go, we've sandwiched that on there. And now we'll just take a little bit of our glue and put it on here. Just 
kind of, I put too much on there. I'm going to kind of wipe a little bit off. There we go. And that just brings out the color a little bit more. It went from, see this is a little bit brighter than what we started with. And that will give that a nice little shiny look. And I keep getting glue all over it. Get that glue out of there. There we go. And so there's that one. And then we'll, after our pretty posy is all dry, we'll fluff it up a little bit more. And then we can, if you put the glue on it, you're gonna you're gonna have a chance of gluing your layers back together again. But you could just take, see, I have a green um, flower on top. I could just take a little dot of my green fingernail polish and just kind of let it let it pull up a little bit on the corner and then just drip and pull up and then we've got a center for our flower that will sparkle so those are our paper clips. I hope that you enjoyed making our paper clips. And I will be back in just a, <laughs> just a second to show you what we need for next week. Okay, I'm back to finish this up and show you what we need for next week. Um, so I just thought that I would show you the little heart that I had cut out that was too little. I drew around that, glued it just in the middle on top of my larger heart. And then I'm just going to take one of our paper clips because it, sorry about the light, it doesn't look great that way. But I'm just going to, I only glued it in the center, so now I'm going to kind of roll it around a paper clip just to give it some dimension so it's not flat on the other heart. And there we go, now it looks like a heart. And then also in the center of my flower, um, this dripped on my mat. And it was the fingernail polish and it dripped and when, as I was cleaning off my mat there it was and I thought well that would look pretty in the middle of that flower so I stuck that there and this flower if I had gone around the edges with black you would have seen it much nicer like here on the heart so um, definitely I would I would go around those in another color so that it shows you definitions between the three layers and then um, when I had painted them, I had separated them a little bit like that. So I have to show you, you just go and push it back through to the other side a little bit and then bring it back to the middle so it's nice and flat. So it's back together like it started with. And then you just put that on a piece of paper. And so these are the three that we made this morning. And I think they look pretty. And... With a box of 80, I could make lots, lots more. But those will look nice on a journal, or if you make someone a card, you can put it on there. They can use it for a bookmark. You can use it for a bookmark. They're just pretty for anything. Papers you have to keep together. There you go. So that's our paper clips. And then I did have some extra, like, little squares that I cut in a circle and the three little templates that I made. And so I just made a little envelope out of our scrap paper that we were cutting our templates out of. And I just made a little envelope out of that scrap paper to put those pieces in because I'm not going to make any more right now, but when I want to make some later, I've got those all together. So I'm just going to put those in our box with our other things. And the way that I made that envelope was you just fold a piece of paper and I leave a lip so that I have a little top on it. Fold that down. Just take this lip and I like to round my edges. Just something I like to do. You don't have to, you can just leave them straight. There's no reason for rounding them really. Other than I like the way it looks. So then we have a little envelope. We take our white glue. And these things may seem very simple, but since we're just going from scratch, I'm just gonna show you the works. Little white glue on each edge. Push those edges down. Leave your flap open until it dries. And once it's dry, You'll have a little envelope that you can put little bits in and you'll have them for later so what we're going to need for next week next week we are going to make just a storage jar so any kind of a jar glass or plastic it doesn't matter and then from the Dollar Tree 
we are going to pick up, um, I picked up this sandpaper and it's a nice large stack of different grits. And we're gonna use this if our jar is plastic. If our jar is plastic, I use sandpaper to just rough it up. So that's what our sandpaper's for. I did pick up some regular brushes that are, these are softer, so it will be easier to spread our glue. And then some tissue paper, any kind of tissue paper that you like, whatever colors you like. If you like black and white or gold or whatever, pick up whatever tissue paper you like. I picked this one up because it had 20 sheets in it and the others only had like eight. So that's why I got them. We will need um, some kind of a seal tight um, container. So there's five in here with the lid and the, the bottom. And that's why I picked up these because there's five, so I'll have some for later for other things. We're gonna use this to put our watered down glue in to decorate our jar. And then for our fifth item, because we have one, two, two, three, four. In the beginning, before we start saving money for our larger things, we're gonna pick up a few staples. <laughs> little pun. Um, I picked up a little stapler. But there are a few things that we're going to need at some point in time that we might as well have in our stash. So our fifth item is a stapler and we'll need that at different points in time. So I figured we'd get it now while we had one extra dollar. So that's what we're going to need for next week. We're going to need the seal tight and you can get any one you want. If you want to get just a single one or a double pack, whatever you think. Um, some of them come with different color lids if you want to color coordinate things. Okay, so we're going to need a seal tight bowl, brushes, soft brushes, sandpaper, and tissue paper. And then also you'll need to um, have a jar from, this is a jelly jar that I got from my dad. And, um, you know, jelly jar, pickle jar, any kind of jar, peanut butter jar, that we're going to just decorate up so that if we make like a whole bunch of these, we can just pop them in a container to keep them all nice and keep them so they're not dusty or anything and or otherwise other little bits that we need to keep track of we'll have a little decorated jar that we can do that with so so far here is our box of the items that we've already purchased for week one and week two and i will see you for week three next tuesday bye bye and i hope that you all have an outstanding day